Good morning and welcome back to my channel and morning devotions. My name is Maggie. If this is your first time stopping by, I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click the notification bell and then come back and check out some of the other content that I have on my channel. It is Sunday, November 19th, and our devotions are coming from Joyce Meyer's book called Trusting God Day by Day. And our devotion today is entitled The Best thing for you. Our scripture comes from the book of Romans chapter 12 verse 6 out of the Amplified Bible and it reads, having gifts, faculties, talents, and qualities that differ according to the grace given us, let us use them. Okay, let's hear how Joyce gets into this. We all have different gifts, but we shouldn't compare or be jealous of the gifts of others. Very very true. I remember hearing one preacher talk of how often he saw Jesus. I had never seen Jesus, so I wondered what was wrong with me. Another person I knew prayed four hours every morning. I could not find enough to pray about to keep praying for four hours and always ended up bored and sleepy. Anybody else relate to this? Because I know that one right there. I definitely understand. So I wondered what was wrong with me. I had no gift to remember large portions of scripture, ditto, like someone else I knew, who memorized all the Psalms and Proverbs as well as other entire books of the Bible, so I wondered what was wrong with me. Boy, I so relate to Joyce on everything she just said right there. <clears throat> I finally realized that nothing was wrong with me. Whatever we cannot do, there are many other things we can Whatever someone else can do, there are always things they cannot do. Don't let the devil deceive you any longer. Don't compare yourself with anyone in any way, especially not spiritually. We can see other people's good examples and be encouraged by them, or I'd like to even say, let someone's um, life inspire you. Give you something to reach for. If they can do it, I can do it kind of thing. Okay. But they must never become our standard. God's standard is our standard. Even if we learn how to do something from them, we still will not do it exactly the same way. Okay. At some time or another, I think we all fall into the trap of wondering why we are not like others or we know or like others we know, or why we don't have the same experiences that they do. But it is a trap and a dangerous one. We are caught in a snare set by Satan when we enter into spiritual competition and comparison. That's not God's way. We're to be a unified body. Not all body parts work the same. And we become dissatisfied with what God is giving to us. We should trust that God will do the best thing for each of us and let him choose what that is. If we trust God in this way, we can lay aside our fears and insecurities about ourselves. I am sure we would all like to see into the spiritual realm and have an abundance of supernatural experiences. How cool would that be? But getting frustrated if we don't only steals our peace and certainly does not produce visions of Jesus. Now, when the body of Christ, that's the church, that's us, when we are described as a body of many members and Jesus is the head, you have to look at our giftings and our abilities in the same way we would look at our body parts. Our fingers and even the fingers themselves have different functions. The thumb does not function the same way as the other fingers. Fingers can never be ears. Ears can never be a mouth or eyes. A mouth and a nose can never be each other. The shoulder, the knee, the elbow, the joints, the arms, the legs, the feet. <clears throat> they can never be what the other body parts are or do what the other body parts do. Even internally, our organs, they're all assigned a task and created for a specific purpose. The lungs can never be the heart. The heart can never be the spleen. And the spleen can, you, know, you see what I'm saying? Those things can never be anything but what they were created to be. And 
They all function in unity as one body, all doing their part, all doing everything that they're supposed to do that God created them to do. And that's what we need to learn to do in the body of Christ. Not, I don't know why things happen for other people. And, you know, I'm not going to be jealous or insecure or compare myself to someone else and, you know, think there's something lacking or at fault in me. I just take that straight to the Lord. Lord, show me what I'm supposed to do. Now, I'm not going to say I didn't fall into that category because that first half of that where she's, what's wrong with me? Why can't I pray for so many hours a day? Am I not holy enough? Am I not committed enough? Do I not have enough faith? You know, we can't, we can't do that. We can ask the Lord those questions, but listen to his answer. He'll begin to tell you, well, you could stop watching so much of that or stop playing that or stop devoting so much time there and give that time to me and study and prayer. You know what I'm saying? There are things he can do to refine us. And that's what I've told you. It's important to seek God about what it is you're doing and ask him, where can I trim the fat, so to speak, of your time? If there's things edging out God and your time schedule during the day, because most of us, that's the disease in America. Busy, 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 busy. Nobody has time. Okay. Ask the Lord. He created time. Where can I cut away some of this activity level? Where can I do it? And then listen to what he says. You may have too many commitments. You may have to say goodbye to some things. Okay. But don't compare yourself to someone else. Just like when God calls us all to go and preach the gospel. He didn't literally mean that we are to stand in the pulpit like a fiery evangelist or a pastor uh, because some people just aren't made for that, okay? But our life should preach the gospel, whether we are quiet and humble in the way that we live, filled with faith and walking in the blessings of God because of our loving kindness. I remember there was a specific incident in a church I attended years ago, and <clears throat> you had a lot of very introverted ladies who were busy about, we were doing some kind of a social event. It was a meal, a lunch of some kind, and there were guests that were coming. And I don't remember the specifics of it, but we had a small kitchen in the church and there was like six ladies crammed in this kitchen, all busy doing something. And so we're like, okay, I'm not getting in there because I was much bigger than I am now. And I'm still pretty big. I'm almost five foot nine. And I wear a size 14, 16, depending on what brand I'm buying. So knowing that I would be in the way of these other ladies, I was just like, what can I do? And they were just like, okay, so because we'd already set up the tables and put up all the stuff and got everything arranged for the room. These ladies are busy in there doing stuff. We were making sure the floors were swept, that everything looked beautiful for the guests that were coming. Is there, is there anything else that we can do? Because they looked very stressed and worried, hurried. Okay. So then guests started arriving. So we were there to greet the guests and invite them in and make them feel welcome and everything else. And we thought it was a great success until at the end when we had our ladies meeting, all those ladies jumped on us and complained and said we didn't do anything to help. And we were all getting kind of scolded. And I said, all right. <laughs> I actually dialed it back a little bit. And I was just like, you know, because we, at the end of it, we all took the trash out. We emptied the garbage. We were clearing the plates and carrying the big bags of garbage out to the dumpster. I mean, we weren't sitting around twiddling our thumbs. But while they were in there getting things ready for the food, we were talking with the guests. And I said, okay, so if all of us were in the kitchen, which is unfeasible because there were six of you in there, what more could I do in that kitchen that you six weren't already doing? And if you wanted to come out and greet and talk with the guests, I would have gone in and taken your place. And I said, if we were all in the kitchen, who would be there to welcome our guests and make them feel welcomed? And that's when you had a real obvious use of the gifts. They were resentful for whatever reason. Maybe their heart wasn't in the right place. They were operating in their gifts and they were comfortable not greeting people. Okay, I am very comfortable greeting people. And a lot of the people who came to those events, their, what they said about the church involved the way that me and my sister and greeted them at the door and made them feel welcomed. That's what made them decide to come back. Not the food we served or anything else. 
that's what they said in their comments and their remarks, especially as they returned later on. They said, we are welcomed so warmly. We definitely wanted to come back. We could feel that. And that's, you know, that's a gifting at place. The fact that we had a, a nice meal, all this other kind of stuff. And it was kind of like you guys, and we got to be careful too, to not get caught in the trap of my gifts are more valuable. My gifts are more useful. Your gifts are crap. You know what I'm saying? My gifts are superior to your gifts which is a little bit of what was going on there. We are doing more for this event than you are. Uh, no, you weren't. You were doing your part. I did my part and we all helped clean up. So I'm not sure where you're saying we didn't do our part. We didn't do our fair share. We weren't in the kitchen, you know, but it, they had to learn that lesson as well. And you have to have a lot of grace when people are learning this particular lesson. Okay. God has called people. The legs that could complain to the body that they do all the work because they carry us around and the ears, you guys don't do nothing. You just sit there on the side of the head. You see what I'm saying? But the, the function of both is just as valuable and just as needed by the body. All right. So anyway, <clears throat> our trust in him today is what spiritual gifts has God given you? Do you know? If you don't ask him. He'll show you, he'll begin to highlight and remind you of these things that you do easily, things you enjoy doing, things you're relaxed at doing. And if you've been intimidated to engage and, and use your giftings, you know, some you may be doing something and may not realize it's a gift. Ask the Lord to show you if you're not sure, okay? Remember what Romans 12, 6 says. Use them. And not just for yourself, Use them to bless the body of Christ. Be yourself. You are unique. Trust that God has a plan just for you and the gifts that he has given you. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father, for this word today, this reminder we can sometimes get caught up in how, why aren't we like this person? Why aren't we like that person? Father, help us to focus on you and what you would have us to do, what it is you created us to do and help us to step into it. For those who don't know what their spiritual gifting is, Holy Spirit, reveal it to them. Show them the areas, Lord, where they are glorifying you in the natural giftings and abilities you put within them. And then show them how they can plug those gifts in to, their, uh, to the body of Christ and be a blessing. Father, I just thank you. I give you all the glory. Bless everyone praying and agreeing with me today. And let you be glorified today in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God bless you and thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I do hope you decide to like and subscribe and click the notification bell. Come back and check out some of the other content that I have on my channel. I hope you guys have a wonderful Sunday. My friend Janet made it in last night. We had a you know fun little casual pizza dinner. Today we're having some pot roast after church. And so I'm really looking forward to fellowshipping with her today. And I hope you guys have a very blessed Sunday. Bye until next time.